In this video, we are going to be adding and subtracting mixed numbers with like denominators. So the first example here is pretty straightforward. We're going to add the numerators, and please, I want you in the habit of dealing with your fraction before moving on to your whole number. And you're going to forget that from time to time, but it's very important, especially when you're doing subtraction. So one, uh, one fifth plus three fifths will give us four, and then of course we'll keep the denominator because it's still fifths. So we get four fifths. Now we're ready to add the whole numbers. Two plus one is three. We always have to ask ourselves, can we convert or can we simplify? And uh, four fifths is a proper fraction, no reason to convert it. And it is simplified because four and five are consecutive numbers and so you won't be able to simplify those anymore. All right, let's move on to example two. This is a subtraction problem. Again, I'm gonna start with the fractions and I'm going to subtract three eighths and one eighth. So three minus one is two, two eighths. And then we're gonna subtract the whole numbers, which gives me two and two eighths. And we ask ourselves, can we convert no, that's not an improper fraction. When we subtract, we're not going to get an improper fraction. But we might have to simplify. And 2 eighths can be simplified. So uh, we're going to take the greatest common factor, which is 2, and we're going to divide 2 eighths by 2 halves. And that gives us 1 fourth. But we don't want to forget the whole number. So make sure you bring that whole number over and put it right next to your simplified fraction. Example 3. Now, this is a fun one. It's, again, a subtraction problem, but notice we're trying to subtract 6 sevenths from 4 sevenths. And that's a little tricky. Here's why I wanted you to make sure that you are dealing with your fractions before your whole numbers. Because we're going to have to do some borrowing. Well, we there's only one place to borrow for the 4 sevenths, and that's the whole number 4. So we're going to borrow a whole number from the 4. So if we borrow a whole number from the 4, that's going to leave 3 as the whole number. But how much did we borrow? We borrowed 1. A whole. We borrowed 1. So we're not going to put a little 1 next to the 4. That's not a whole number. That's putting a little 1 next to the 4. Now we want a whole number. So what would a whole number be in this problem? Looking at your denominator, what would a whole number be if we were to make it sevenths? How many sevenths would equal one? Well, seven sevenths would. Seven sevenths equals one. So when we borrow from that four, that whole number, we're going to add whatever the denominator is to the numerator. So four plus seven is 11. So now we have 11 sevenths, and you might be panicking. You might be saying to yourself, oh, but that's an improper fraction. It doesn't matter. It's fine. We want him to be an improper fraction for a second so that we can subtract 11 minus 6 and get 5. The denominator will stay the same. We'll subtract the whole numbers, 3 and 5 sevenths. We still ask ourselves, can we simplify? And... 5 and 7 are both prime numbers, so we're not going to be able to simplify this anymore. Example 4. So now we're going to add. So we're going to add the numerators. That gives us 16. We're going to keep the denominator as 10. We're going to add the whole numbers. And, of course, we're going to ask ourselves, can we convert and simplify? Well, we certainly can convert because 16 tenths is an improper fraction. So we're going to convert that to 1 and 6 tenths. But 6 and 10 are both even, so I know I can also simplify 6 tenths down to 3 fifths. Don't forget the 6. You've got to remember that whole number. 